Hey, Pat. Hey, Greg. Do you want to know a secret? Oh, yeah. Tell me. I'm Batman. Welcome to Passion of the Geeks, the show in which two friends and fellow geeks talk about geek and pop culture and everything else they enjoy. I am Greg. And I am Pat. And let's get on with the show. Hello, Pat. How are you doing? Oh, well, fine. How are you? I'm great as well. I'm really excited about today's episode. Oh, yes. Even though we come out a little bit late this week, but yeah, life was busy. Life was really busy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's get right on with the show. So, do you have any cool news that you found out recently? Oh, yeah. In spirit of this episode, I found out that, you know, Kevin Conroy, the voice actor that voices Batman? Of course I do. Well, apparently, he also played one time a live-action version of Batman. And I missed it. I mean, that was a long time ago. That was, I think, pre-quarantine. You're kind of late to that party. Yeah, I know. I, I kind of tried to get uh, catch on with the Arrow Wars. But, I mean, there is so much going on. And, well, time is short. I just haven't catched up yet. Yeah, I mean, the Arrow Wars is quite a time commitment. Mm. And... I have to admit, besides those crossover episodes, I'm not up to date as well. So yeah, you, I'm, gi I'm going to give you a pass on this one. Well, thank you. But speaking of Batman news, I have Batman news as well, actually. Uh, last week, uh, it was announced, and kind of the announcement is not that it's going to happen, but that there are talks that Michael Keaton, the Batman from those uh, 1980, 1990s Batman movies, Batman and Batman Returns, is in talks to return as Batman in the Flash movie that they're developing at the moment. That sounds awesome. Uh, here's the thing. It sounds awesome. I'm not sure if it's just stunt casting to get me excited about the DC universe again. <laughs> But he's one of my favorite versions of Batman, or kind of uh, Michael Keaton played one of my favorite iterations of Batman. So I li really liked him as Batman. So I'm excited about that. Oh, yes. Not sure how they're going to do it, how they're going to be able to incorporate him into whatever the DC universe or DC movie universe at the moment is. But yeah, I mean, well played WB to get me excited in the DC universe again. <laughs> well, now I'm excited as well. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Do you have anything interesting for our listeners to check out this week? Something to recommend for them? Yeah, I have something very, very small. And because we kind of thought that this might be a, a comic-centric episode, I was thinking about recommending a comic as well. I wanted to have a bit of a light-hearted comic, and I was thinking about Star Wars, Tag and Pink. Have you ever heard from them? Never in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea is, it's a comic by Kevin Rubio, and it's sort of, uh, I mean, it's not meant seriously, it's sort of a fun thought experiment. And the thing is, Tag and Bink are two rebels slash imperial stormtroopers they are very lazy and kind of just uh, get through everything stumbling from one place to another and those two are responsible for everything that happens in the original star wars movies that's kind of unexplained or kind of a plot hole for example when the millennium falcon comes to Alderaan and uh, there is this single Imperial fighter flying around. Star Wars spoilers, Star Wars spoilers. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And I, w I won't tell anybody w what, what happens with Alderaan. <laughs> so we're good. But there is this single uh, Imperial fighter flying around. And in the movie, you never know why this fighter is there and why it's flying around. 
But in the comic, you learn that Tag and Pink actually boarded this fighter to try to escape from the Death Star. They kind of fail with everything they do. And these are always the two stormtroopers that kind of miss shooting Obi-Wan and so on and so forth. Um, it's it's a really fun little Star Wars comic. Of course, it's not canon. It's fun to think about and and uh, the situations to get into. I can recommend it. Okay, sounds interesting. I, I Usually, I kind of enjoy these stories that take place at the sidelines of these big events yeah. and focus on common people, so to speak. So I, I'll, I'll probably have to look into this. Star Wars Tag and Bink by Kevin Rubio. Sounds interesting. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I have two things I've watched this week or kind of spent time with this week. Uh, first thing is I'm not that much into sports, mm -hmm. but I usually like sports movies or even sports documentaries because, yeah, for some reason, I, I'm not that interested in the outcome of a game. But as soon as it's about the behind the scenes and the emotions and stuff like that, I'm usually up for it. So uh, on Netflix, there is this uh, mini series called The Last Dance, which deals uh, with the kind of it focuses on the last season where the kind of the that version of the Chicago Bulls with Dennis Rodman and Michael Jordan. OK. And uh, kind of all these other really, really famous players was kind of basically at their peak and it tells the story of kind of all those years that Michael Jordan was part of the Bulls and it's just a really interesting documentation of what went into creating the team uh, kind of how they played what kind of emotions they went through and some of the troubles they had and it's it's just one of those th things you just watch and you You feel good. You don't really have to think too much about it afterwards because, yeah, it's just, oh, okay, ah, I remember this. And I wasn't a basketball fan, but you kind of remember who Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls were. Yeah. So it was kind of a, a nice little nostalgia trip. Uh, yeah, kind of a trip down memory lane, even though it wasn't really memories. But yeah, so Last Dance on Netflix, I can highly recommend. Okay. And the other thing I started to do was... Uh, I started to rewatch Babylon 5. Oh, me too. And I think at this point, we definitely have to do an episode about Babylon 5. Oh, definitely. Because I just started with the second season and I was really surprised how good the first season was. I watched it a while ago and I thought I did not have that many memories of the first season. But rewatching it, lots of really cool scenes that I remember kind of for me why I like Babylon 5 we're actually part of season one as well okay so it's it's usually kind of shows like that they take a while to get going and Babylon 5 was good from the get-go yeah and season two is even better than season one yeah so yeah we definitely have to do an episode about Babylon 5 so if anyone is out there who likes cool sci-fi shows give Babylon 5 a chance watch it and then come back in maybe after our summer break or something we can do an episode just an hour talk about babylon 5 and why it's so great oh we definitely should do this yeah we definitely should do that yeah oh it's a highly recommended show it's it's just you you need a little bit to get into the style and the i i mean its effects are dated that's to be expected but They still work in a way. You have to give your brain a little bit time to adjust to that. And then they still work perfectly. I, I would actually say the the whole uh, visual effects, they're actually okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, they they kind of look like a bad video game today. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's just the quality and the textures and stuff like that. But actually, the space scenes, they're pretty good. Mm. Fight choreography on the show when people fight each other in real life. That's another issue. Yeah. I think that's where you see that, okay, it's yeah, quite an old show. But space scenes, older textures, but other than that, it works quite well, actually. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's move on to our main topic. So, yeah, no surprise, we decided to talk about Batman today. Yeah. 
and Batman in all his different, uh, yeah, all, all the different versions of Batman, or maybe not all of them, but uh, kind of the idea is to kind of get into a general discussion of why we like Batman, what, at least according to us, uh, makes him a really cool superhero, mm-hmm. and kind of the aspects of Batman we we like or kind of would like to see more uh, more of in some adaptations and some comic books. So uh, I think our viewer or listenership uh, should be quite familiar with the basic story of Batman. But just a basic rundown, Batman is actually quite old. Yeah. It, he appeared first in Detective Comics 27 uh, in 1939. And for those wondering, Detective Comics... That's why DC Comics is called DC Comics today. Uh, He was created by artist Bob Kane uh, together with writer Bill Finger. Mm -hmm. Interesting side note here. Bill Finger, for a long time, he usually did not appear in the credits for Batman. It just said Batman created by Bob Kane. And kind of recently, and I think I'm pretty sure it was roughly around the time that Batman vs. Superman came out. Mm-hmm. And I think that was that was the time when they kind of DC Comics and the Finger family reached kind of an agreement. And I think since then, and even in versions of kind of older Batman movies, when they redo them for digital distribution or stuff like that, they add created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. Mm. And yeah, I kind of I, I like when people who helped create uh, something or fostered something along kind of get their credit so yeah kind of little side note bob kane and bill finger those are the two guys that we have to thank for batman exactly and i mean the thing with bill finger i think i remember he was credited in the nolan trilogy but i'm not quite sure right now but the thing with bill finger is i think he was more important to what batman is today than just the design that Bob Kane made. So uh, I think it's it's really important to give Bill Finger credit where credit is due. I don't know why it is that way, but for, for some strange reason, when you think of Spider-Man, you think Stan Lee, the writer first, mm. and Steve Ditko, the artist, second. Mm. And for Batman, it's different, or kind of the other way around. So yeah, that I, I always found that interesting. Yeah, quite so. So yeah, Pat, what's uh, what's your history with Batman comics? Are you an avid Batman comic reader? Do you have any any favorite Batman comics? Well, um, I must confess that usually when I'm reading comics, they very often include Batman. Batman was probably the first superhero I got to know, the first superhero comics I've read, together with Spider-Man. And they both are still my favorites. And one interesting thing is, for me personally, is that in primary school, we had a teacher. And this one day he came to school and he wanted to show us how to properly read a comic. He showed us how a comic is read, how um, the sound effects are uh, read and everything, which is very great. And I'm really grateful for that because he really pulled me even more into comics than I was before. And he also chose a Batman comic to do that. And uh, the interesting thing is, uh, I I did know a little bit about Batman back then, but a lot of my uh, uh, classmates, they were kind of disappointed when they realized uh, Batman is just an ordinary man. <laughs> so there was really a disappointment going on. And because uh, they were thinking he was like Superman, uh, some sort of super being, but not Batman. He is not a super being. And I think this is the thing that I like the most about Batman. I like it the most when there, when Batman is the Batman that I grew up with, one that doesn't use guns, one that doesn't kill. So these are sort of my my favorite comics. I don't like it a lot when they try to do something else with him. 
What about you? Uh, I complete. Well, I did not have a teacher as cool as yours, apparently. So I did not learn to read uh, comics in primary school. Mm-hmm. I always liked about Batman that he was just a normal being, or yeah. I mean, basically his his only superpower is that he that he's rich and smart. <laughs> Well, he, he is sort of trained to the peak of human perfection, I would say. But yeah, other than that, he's just smart and has great gadgets. Yeah, and kind of every time he has to fight a super powered being, he has to rely on his wits. He has to rely on his intellect, on his gadgets to actually get out of this situation. And I think to uh, to a large extent that's some that's the main reason why batman comics are so popular and batman is a popular character because he is in danger yeah superman unless there's kryptonite involved he's never really in danger and batman is always in danger mm. so uh, I, th- i think that's that, that makes for some compelling storytelling because yeah we like to see our heroes in peril so that they can overcome those issues and everything. And with, with Batman, yeah, he's he's made out of flesh and bones that can, well, you can stab him, you can break his bones. And I, I quite like that about him. And I actually like when kind of a Batman comic focuses on that. And kind of when you look at maybe not the early ones, because they usually did not focus too much on blood and gore, But I think in some modern Batman comics, you uh, you can actually see that he's bleeding. You can see that he's hurt. Yeah, quite often. And that that even though he's yeah he's almost superhuman, but I think it humanizes him enough to yeah have this connection with the with the audience, with the reader, or whatever. I mean, if I were rich and kind of had time to train. I could technically become Batman. Yeah. And sometimes it's it's a little bit disappointed that there's so many billionaires out there and none of them has decided to become Batman in real life. One problem with that, do you know a billionaire you would actually want to be Batman? Um, yeah, well, I, I guess not. <laughs> do you really want to, for example, do you want Bill Gates to be Batman? I don't know. <laughs> well, I think we can agree that Bill Gates is not at the height of physical perfection. <laughs> He probably wouldn't last a minute. <laughs> probably not, no. I just, I, I just picture uh, Bill Gates in the bad computer and the bad computer runs on Windows and he's analyzing a toxin to create an anti-serum to save a whole city. Blue screen. That's harsh. <laughs> but it kind of that's that's probably how it would go so but uh but anyway do you have do you have a favorite batman comic yeah i was thinking about which one could be my favorite batman comic and i guess we we will talk about some comics that i think are among my favorites but one that probably is not one that is in a lot of favorites lists uh, and that I like a lot is Gotham by Gaslight. Mm -hmm. And okay, this is not a canonical comic. It's one of the DC's uh, Elseworld, I think they call it. These are more thought experiments, what if stories. And it's ordinary Bruce Wayne, ordinary Batman, so to speak, but it's set in the Victorian era. And, um, Well, for one, I love the Victorian era. I think I've mentioned that before. You mentioned that before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what I think is great about that Batman is he does still rely on gadgets, but they're not as sophisticated as in more modern in- incarnations of Batman. And and still, you can just see how how he does his work, how he does his detective work uh his his fighting and everything it just fits very well together uh it's a it's a cool story uh i liked it a lot so probably this is one of my favorites i mean i i would say i actually like uh like that one as well and i think the reason why it works quite well 
is because the character of Batman, I think because gadgets uh, play a huge part, he works well even if you use gadgets from another time. Mm-hmm. Because uh, he's, I mean, he is part of him is Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. So why wouldn't he work in a Victorian age? Yeah. So uh, it, it it actually makes sense that he works there. I'm not exactly sure that, that Superman works as well in that time period. Mm-hmm. But for me, at least, Batman works quite well. And I mean, you, you talked uh, about uh, Assassin's Creed. What, uh, what was the one? A Syndicate. Yeah. And I mean, uh, let, let's be honest. Is that gameplay so different? You could actually just skin the game to be a Batman game. It would work as well. I mean, obviously, Batman doesn't murder people. Obviously. And yeah, he shouldn't. Yeah. He, sh- uh, he should not murder people. <laughs> should not murder people. But yeah. if he just ties them up, it's it would work as a game, uh, as a Batman game as well. Hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe this is part of why I think Assassin's Creed Syndicate is so compelling because you are a Batman with murder, but there are also uh, some uh, detective missions in Syndicate. So, uh, yeah. What about your favorite? Do you have a favorite? Uh, I, I'm not sure if I really have a favorite. Uh, when I read Batman comics, I kind of try to be at least a little bit up to date on the current run, mm. which has obviously ups and downs. Uh, I have uh, lots of Batman specials, things like that. Uh, for example, I really enjoyed Court of Owls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. I think that uh, I quite liked and it was, was part of the kind of real, uh, real series. Uh, also Hush by Jeff Loeb. Mm-hmm. That's a very good one. It was also part of the uh, kind of normal Batman run. Mm-hmm. What I really liked about Hush is kind of that it used Batman's rogues gallery in a quite in a really interesting way. Mm-hmm. Kind of because all his usual foes were kind of weird. Yeah. And it, uh, what are they? Why are they not behaving like they're supposed to behave? And then the more you, you re- learned about the story, you kind of figured out, ah, that's why. And I really enjoy that mystery Mm -hmm. because, uh, as I said before, for me, Batman needs to be at least a little bit detective. And kind of in Hush, he has to do a little bit of detective work. He has to figure out who this mysterious creature who tries to ruin his life is. And yeah, I really like that aspect of Batman when he actually has to use his brains. Yeah. Yeah. What what's your opinion on those deconstruction Batman comics from from the eighties? Oh, let, let's let's talk about the big one, Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, that's that's indeed a big one. Dark Knight Returns is a comic that is in almost any best Batman comics list. I would say, probably, rightfully so. Yeah, with good reason. Actually, it's it's a really really great uh, story. I like the style. I liked how it's set up and also how it resolves. My problem with the story is that, in my opinion, you shouldn't read it if you don't know Batman. Because, as you said, it deconstructs Batman. And in my opinion, this only works if you know how Batman usually is, how he is constructed, how he usually operates. I think... Uh, when, when you hear that Zack Snyder probably has read Dark Knight Returns, and you can actually see that in his movies, I think. You, you see that he probably read Dark Knight Returns and he took a few cues from it, but it doesn't work if you haven't seen the real Batman. It's not Batman then. Would you agree? Yeah, I I, I completely agree. And I, I really like the Dark Knight Returns. It's. I think. I think it might be one of the best comics I know. Mm-hmm. I would never say it's my favorite Batman comic because it's not really Batman. Because, and that's what I said. Was what I meant with deconstructing him. As you said, you need to know who Batman is supposed to be, mm. and then it's interesting how he got to that part where he doesn't behave like Batman anymore. Where he is a different version of himself. 
And I think that's something that was kind of very typical of the 80s to take all those heroes that are famous, those heroes that have kind of one way of solving problems and kind of turning them on their head and making them do things differently because, yeah, they needed to change the formula a little bit. But if you want to change the formula before you actually know what the formula is, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, try again. And I, I actually think Zack Snyder is a very talented director. Oh, yeah. But I don't think he's that good at writing or developing a story. Mm. And kind of, in my opinion, kind of the same mistake he made with Batman in, in, in those DC movies. And Batman is one of the things that works best in those movies. <laughs> yeah, sadly. The, the, th- the thing he did with, it's, it's kind of the same thing he did with Watchmen. Mm. He just liked it because it is cool but he did not fundamentally understand what it was about. And it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a little side note, but actually uh, lots of people, their main character in Watchmen is Rorschach. Mm -hmm. And he shouldn't be your main character because he's an awful human being. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah, in in the Watchmen movie, which which is a movie, it's okay, Mm -hmm. but... In a way, you're supposed to sympathize with Rorschach, and no, you shouldn't. But yeah, it's it's kind of uh, for for me that that's uh, my pr- it's it's not a problem I have with uh, the Dark Knight Returns. It's what some people, at least I fear, do not understand that this is Batman at his lowest, Batman losing faith in himself. Yeah. And that's something that's really interesting, but it shouldn't be the base level version of Batman. Exactly. I mean, if, if, if you want to do a movie adaptation of Dark Knight Returns, get the same actor who played Batman 30 years ago. I mean, if, for, for example, if, if Chris Nolan and Christian Bale decide to do another Batman in, let's say, 20, 30 years, and they do The Dark Knight Returns as a version of, kind of, as a riff on their original Batman trilogy. Sign me up for that. Take my money. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Because then they're doing exactly what Frank Miller tried to do with Dark Knight Returns in the 80s. But if you just, yeah, we need to reboot Batman. Let's do Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> Not sure that's the way to go. Now, th- that doesn't work. Yeah. And I, I think... People feel that as well, even if they don't know Batman all that much, they can feel that there's something amiss, there's something wrong with how Batman is portrayed. Yeah, but as you said, he's not the biggest problem of these movies. Yeah. Uh, Let's uh, get away from comics uh, Mm -hmm. for a moment. Or, yeah, let's. uh, What's your opinion of Batman on television? Or how much do you love the Batman show from the 60s? Honestly, I love it a lot. It's so much fun to watch. I mean, Batman, he's always a child of his times. And Batman of the 60s has the style that was in the 60s, which means he's a a little bit campy. Oh, actually, he's Not is, just a little bit. <laughs> he's very campy. <laughs> but that's honestly part of the fun. And uh, the, the thing is that just random people talk with them about Batman. And you, you kind of ask them, if I say the, the name Batman, what comes to your mind? And people go like, no, 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 that is in our <laughs> conscious mind, the Adam West version of, of, of Batman. And I mean, to this day, uh, it's, it's really fun to watch episodes. And I, I like how they captured actually quite a bit from, from Batman. I mean, he's not brooding and, and stuff, but still uh, he does 
good things. He cares about his family, the Bat family. And, um, and I mean, the Rogue Gallery is just great in their own campiness. What do you think about the TV series? I, I loved it as a kid. I can obviously recognize today that it's not the best and not my favorite version of Batman. <laughs> no. But that doesn't mean that you can't cherish every second of it. And there, there's so many little details in there that just bring me endless joy. Shark repellent spray and things like that. <laughs> the classic. <laughs> they, they, they just, they must have had so much fun in those writing rooms or whatever. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just pure fun and joy. And all the villains, they're chewing the scenery. Batman, you, you can actually see that they're having a lot of fun. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think that that that's I think that's the thing that captured me as a yeah, as a young child. It was just a fun half hour or hour of television, mm. colorful, not too violent. So my parents let me watch it, <laughs> and yeah, it was it was Batman. It was a superhero, and uh, yeah, there was Robin, the 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 little one. You could a little bit more identify with. And I think at some point I even had a little crush on Batgirl. Oh yeah, why not? I mean, so yeah, it's just it, it was just just fun, and I'm pretty sure it was actually my introduction to Batman. Mm -hmm. I think before I've read the Batman comics, I think I've watched that show on TV. Maybe that's a reason why I still really like it. It's obviously not as good as the other Batman TV version, and I think we both agree that Batman the animated series is yeah how should we put it it's at, at least for me probably the best version or best complete version of batman there is definitely what they did with the animated series is perfect or, or so close to perfection it's a series that you can watch as a child but you just have as much fun watching it as an adult it's a batman that just works that takes itself seriously Wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I think it was. I, th I think the reason why it still works today, and I have it on Blu-ray, and I regularly watch an episode or two. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, it not just took Batman seriously; it also took the audience seriously. Yeah. And honestly, I also think that the old Batman show did that. It just had a yeah different sensibility about it. It wanted to be camp, but within that camp, it did not try to make fun of the audience for liking it. And Batman the Animated Series, they, they tried to tell good and interesting stories. Mm -hmm. Even if it was mainly aimed at kids, they tried to have coherent plot lines, compelling characters, and so on. And I think you might not be able to recognize why it works as a kid, but when you revisit it, as an adult, mm. you see, oh, okay, those were actual good stories. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini, I think they cared a lot about Batman and they cared even more about the audience. I think that's why Batman the Animated Series and all the follow ups and, and kind of technically most of the DC animated universe that's. Let's be honest, most of it is somehow connected to the original Batman show. Yeah. As this following today. Yeah, for good reason. For for good reason. They took all the good elements from other versions of Batman and put them together in a way that just worked for audiences of all ages. Mm -hmm. And even the Batman, first Batman movie by Tim Burton from 1989, I think... They even took some of the aesthetics and some of the, not the music cues because the music was uh, was composed by Shirley Walker for the for the show, but it kind of picked the sound up where Elfman left it off. Yeah, it, it sounded very similar, visually and acoustically. It it just picked up on that version of Batman, which was hugely popular as well. They just fixed some of the Batman mistake from that movie. And I think that's why it's so beloved. It's mm. just Batman as we know and want him. Exactly. Really watchable show. And I would go one step further from that time. As you said, the Superman show 
really great, the animated series. And then when they put them together in the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited series, they have some truly great stories in there. It's it's really, really watchable. Really great stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I talked uh, talked briefly about uh, the Batman movie by Tim Burton. So uh, there have been a couple of Batman movies. Yeah. Let's lump the first four into uh, together and then the, the the others. So what's your opinion on the first four Batman movies? Kind of Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's... It's a little bit mean to put them together <laughs> uh, because... Okay, let, let's do Batman, Batman Returns first. Yeah, because they have a completely different style. Um, I can see why you put them together, but it, it's not fair. <laughs> well, first, Batman and Batman Returns. Um, as you said before, Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne slash Batman is absolutely great. I like what he did with uh, with his role. I liked Jack Nicholson as the Joker. I think you can see that he had a lot of fun playing the Joker. Um, it's it's really great to watch them. I like the whole aesthetics, the style of, of the movie. The gothic architecture of Gotham is awesome. I, I would go as far as to say Gotham really is its own character in that movie because of how distinct that it looks and even a little bit more in in Batman Returns then. So it's really one of my favorite movies. It's just... It's actually not a good incarnation of Batman or the Joker. So when it comes to the character of Batman, I think the movie does a few things terribly wrong, in my opinion. But then again, I'm always one for, if it's a different medium, it's, if it's an adaption, I'm all for changes. But there's somewhere it's a fine line where, where you get too far and where you, where you get into a place where you think, okay, if they changed this, then maybe they could have changed the character but but i'm glad they didn't uh, because the the first batman movie i think it came at the right time and it just needed to be like this to kickstart batman in a common consciousness yeah i agree with you to some extent i did not mind too much uh what they change about batman because uh yeah, they, they just tried to do the best Batman movie they could, and that's that's how they uh, went about it. Yeah. But they did not uh, kind of focus or they did not celebrate what they did differently. I'm really sorry to, again, uh, kind of talk badly about those l- last few DC superhero movies. But uh, in, in Man of Steel, for example, they m- tried to make a huge deal out of the fact that uh, Superman is not supposed to kill when he kills Zod. Yeah. But that version of Superman uh, kind of n- never ever had that spoken out. It was not part of that version of Superman. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. But they still tried to focus on it. And in, uh, in Batman and Batman Returns, it was never really an issue that Batman does not kill. Mm-hmm. It was not part of that version. And they, yeah, they did not write home about that one. So it it was not the focus of it. It was not something that was important for that character, which uh, in, for in that moment, it's okay for me. But if they would have wanted me to remember after he blows up all those henchmen or whatever, that no, no, but I'm not going to kill the Joker or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Th- then I would have had a problem. Yeah. Yeah. It, He's consistent, yes. He's consistent, yeah. That's that's what I meant. He's, he's consistent. Uh, and yeah, just the visuals and especially the music. Mm. I, th- I think those are the r- real strength of those movies. And Michael Keaton, I, I like him as Batman. Mm-hmm. I love him as Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, he's kind of those, he's, he's quirky personalities. He, mm-hmm. he, he's just how I want billionaires to behave. <laughs> a little bit weird, kind of not, not fully present or at least pretending to not be fully present. So I quite like that about those two movies. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I think I like the second one a little bit more. Yeah, I would agree. Yes. Even though Batman isn't in it as much. Yeah, it's it's more a movie about the villains. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's more it's more a movie about the villains, but but still, it's kind of yeah, it really leans into the atmosphere of Gotham and so on. So yeah, I, I actually quite enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, what about Batman Forever and Batman and Robin? And yeah, I, th- I think at this point we kind of have to mention it that last week Joel Schumacher, the director of those two movies, passed away. So yeah, rest in peace. I think lots of people really hate those two movies. Mm-hmm. I have to admit, they're obviously not the best Batman movies, but I think they're they're charming in their own way. And I think Batman Forever uh, was Jim Carrey as the Riddler, Edward Nigma. Yeah, I kind of liked his performance, and I think that worked for me. And I have to admit, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mister Freeze. It's it's. It's so wrong. It's yes. just awesome. I mean, it's... What, what, what did he say? Chill out. Or kind of just his, his freeze puns. I yeah. mean, they're, they're, they're so stupid. They're just all-time classics. I mean, you, you can feel that Arnold Schwarzenegger has a lot of fun playing the role. <laughs> he is terribly miscast, probably. But he's part of the fun of the movie. Yeah, it's it's almost as campy as the 60s TV show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe in parts even more so. <laughs> Maybe in parts even more so, yeah. So, yeah, I, I have to admit, I, I kind of enjoyed him. And if, if you're really honest, and I think we mentioned this fact a couple of times today already, that... These movies were just a product of their time as much mm-hmm. as the comics of the 80s or much as the show of the 60s was. It Late 90s, it was just an era of, of camp and stuff like that. And I think that's uh, f- maybe to some extent why Joel Schumacher was, was hired because he could deliver those things. And he delivered uh, the, uh, kind of those things in other movies that, that, that worked quite well. So, yeah, it's... Mm-hmm. It, he was he was hired to do that and he delivered yeah some people did not like it but yeah it, they're not my favorite batman movies but they're okay um, yeah. i mean i i can understand it a little bit um the tim burton batman movies were really really dark and <laughs> batman returns even more so than um the first batman i mean the penguin was really creepy and sometimes gross i would say (laughs) and i can understand that studios thought oh god we went too far we need we need to make them more lighthearted um maybe merchandising had something to do with it i i could imagine that because (laughs) it's it's very hard to sell toys with batman returns i mean it's it's a creepy movie it's not for children I mean, that was part of the problem that they had Mac- McDonald's tie-ins for Batman Returns. And let's be honest, it, it, it basically is a Tim Burton fetish movie. <laughs> yeah, it sometimes feels like one. Yeah, sometimes feels like one. No, and I mean, it's, 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 it's a movie, as you said, it's a movie about villains. And to some extent, even Batman is a villain in that movie in the sense that he's kind of caught in his own way and cannot escape. He doesn't have a character arc in this movie. He's at the same point in the end of the movie as he started. It's it's really everything around him that's changing mm-hmm. and not for the better. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I mean, one thing that you have to say is that Tim Burton managed to make a scene about penguins putting the penguin uh, to rest because he died and to make it sort of touching. Well, the soundtrack has a lot to do with it, I guess, but yeah. And and then comes Edward Nygma and the Riddler. 
<laughs> and Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face. <laughs> it's it's a totally different direction. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, uh, Tim Burton is definitely a talented director, as was Joel Schumacher. Yeah. Uh, Danny Elfman is a really good composer. Oh yeah. One of the probably one of the best currently working and actually so is uh i mean the soundtracks of both both scores of batman forever and batman and and robin they're actually good as well composed Mm -hmm. by elliot goldenthal if i'm uh, if i'm correct obviously that helps yeah but yeah so uh we're already running a bit long uh should we postpone the nolan movies uh to another episode or do we just quickly uh breeze through the nolan movies as well I think we could quickly breathe through them because I, I think people still know them. Yeah, not to focus too much. I kind of like Christian Bale as Batman, yeah. especially in the first two movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I liked about the second movie, Dark Knight, is that it leaned a little bit more into Batman as a detective as other Batman movies did. Yeah, There was a little bit of that with the with the evil machine he built and stuff like that. So I, I quite enjoyed that. Uh one thing I don't really like about, I think, most modern Batman movies, and including the Snyder movies in that as well, is that Batman looks like a tank. Yeah. So I kind of, I'm, I'm missing that Batman as a detective aspect. And I think that was not very present in the Burton movies as well. That's, I mean, Batman, he, he's supposed to be the world's greatest detective. Show me that in a movie. Exactly. They just focus on him being a ninja. Yeah. I want Ninja Detective. Yeah, that that is why, uh, for example, the Arkham games work so well, because they focus on both. But in the movies, it, it's really not used too much. In in Dark Knight, yeah, he does a little bit of detective work. But even there, I mean... A little bit. It's, it's very toned down. And I also think, I mean, the Ninja Batman thing is great and everything, but yeah, looking like a tank. I mean, Batman does that in the comics as well, but only if it's necessary. If he has a fight ahead of him that really requires uh, more armor, then he changes into another bat suit. And I mean, all the movies basically just had one bat suit, and this was it. There was nothing going on with that. I, I actually like the Nolan trilogy. I mean, the first two parts. In hindsight, I. For some reason, I like Batman Begins a little bit more, uh, except it has uh, some glaring plot holes, but I'm usually okay with that. Dark Knight is the better movie, all in all. It's just nowadays when you watch The Dark Knight, there is a sort of... I mean, we we watched The Dark Knight in New York uh, when there was the midnight screening of Dark Knight Crisis. And... What I hated a little bit about The Dark Knight was every time the Joker, uh, uh, there was a scene with the Joker, every time he was there, people were like cheering and, yeah, the Joker, woo! <laughs> and nobody was cheering for Batman. And I found that a little unsettling. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like all the people cheering for Darth Vader in Rogue One when he appears. Because cheering for the the evil ones is that cool i i don't know I, I think they cheered because i mean the dark knight is the joker's movie it's heath ledger's movie he's of course i think he's he's a big part of why that movie works so well mm-hmm. and a big part why dark knight rises uh was a letdown is and, and i th- actually think tom hardy as bane or that version of bane is actually okay as well mostly yes but Bane did not have that impact that the Joker had. Mm. Because kind of the Joker was a force of nature, whereas Bane was just another tank. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it did not help that you have a Batman movie where Batman appears for 15 minutes, and, but it, that is almost three hours long or so. Yeah. And, yeah, it kind of, it again, it, it, it was a little bit convoluted. It, it, I think Dark Knight Rises was just a little bit too much. Yeah. Kind of, it's, I mean, yeah, one shouldn't complain about stakes or everything, but I think they, they just had, they wanted to make the stakes so high. And at, at some point, it just didn't seem reasonable anymore. And if if you have a Batman, that's, that's kind of the whole Batman, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy is kind of rooted in this hyper reality. 
And Dark Knight Rises kind of completely does away with that. Mm. It was just, sounds strange, but it was too comic booky compared to the others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but... No, no, I think I know what you mean. Yeah. That's just me. And, and again, it was, was a product of its time, kind of how can we make this n- even more dark? Yeah. And more, more, how can he add more dark and despair? Yeah, I think it's at some point he, not that you want something lighter, but yeah, it's still, it's it's supposed to be a comic book movie. I think uh, I'm probably going to get flagged for, for that for our non-existent listener base, but sometimes it's okay to have a little bit fun in a Batman movie. Yeah. But yeah. And, and I actually hope that we're, we're getting those. I mean, uh, there is one Batman movie that is a lot of fun. Yeah. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think I am, yeah. The, the Lego, Lego Batman, Batman movie. And it's it's just I mean that that's a really good Batman movie that is a lot of fun. That's a fantastic one. Yes. I mean, even there's a lot of jokes going on. It has maybe too many jokes because each scene is full of jokes and you cannot get them all with on viewing. But what they did with the character of Batman is excellent. I, I mean, of course it's exaggerated because it's it's a Lego movie, but but what is there is very, very fitting for a Batman character. Yeah, I mean it's he's he's dark and brooding. Yeah. <laughs> and they they hit you with a baseball bat until you understand <laughs> that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everything needs to be black, and <laughs> he, he just speaks in this exaggerated Batman voice. But he has a really interesting relationship with the Joker. So yeah, yeah, and and also the, the relationship he builds up with his Bat family very very close to what the comics do. It's wonderful. It's and it can be a very touching moment. Except of course, each touching moment ends somewhere in a joke. <laughs> That doesn't mean that the moment wasn't touching. Yeah. But it's it's a wonderful incarnation of Batman. Yeah. Wonderful, w- wonderful, wonderful version of Batman, yeah. Exactly. Okay. I think we probably have to revisit Batman at some point. Maybe deep dive into maybe Batman the Animated Series or maybe yeah. kind of do another long discussion about the video games or something because there's a lot we haven't mentioned. But I think uh, for this week, I think we we're able to communicate what we like about Batman and what versions of him we would like to see more of. Yeah, because he's a great character. We want to see more of. We want to see more of him. Yeah, and I'm quite excited about the next Batman movie, Mm -hmm. Uh, the Batman that's supposed to come out uh, 2021. And as we mentioned uh, earlier, we're both excited about Michael Keaton returning to play Batman. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed that that happens. But yeah, so this is it for this week. Please like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. We're on all major podcasting services and on passionofthegeeks.com. Pat, it was a pleasure as always. Yeah. Take care. You too. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista.